MGM Northfield Park presents The Rizzo Show. And now, your host, Tony Rizzo. Hey, now, oh, we're back in Grandma's, kids. We're back in Grandma's house. I'm sorry. We have new studios coming. Listen, I would love to show you the new studios, but I would get in a lot of trouble. But let me just say they look really nice. Welcome to The Rizzo Show. What a great weekend of sports we had, huh? Did you have fun? Brown and orange scrimmage. Folks, 37,000 Browns fans headed to First Energy Stadium last night to check out the orange and brown scrimmage. Yes, 37,000 for a scrimmage. This is what Cleveland has turned into. And Baker and company didn't disappoint. Here's what I liked about what Freddie Kitchens did last night. Number one, they weren't there to put on a show. Yeah, they, they threw the ball around and they ran their offense. But that was basically a practice. That's the same stuff. I've been seeing in Berea for the past week and a half. Now, the Browns don't play a game until Thursday night, but I got to believe at this point, everybody's tired of hitting everybody. You know, like, believe me when I tell you, look at the stands. Is that unbelievable? Folks, that's a practice right now. Listen, the fans are going crazy. We haven't even had, I mean, a game yet, uh, not even a preseason game, and you can feel the energy. Can you imagine what it's going to be like? on September 8th for the opener. Here is head coach Freddie Kitchens and his quarterback on that big crowd last night. I understand the passion that these fans have and they demonstrated every opportunity they have to do that. And this is no, no different. And uh, this was an opportunity for them to come out, show their support, show their excitement. And uh, yeah, so there was adrenaline. Wasn't even half fill and it's just, the energy is unreal. You can feel it uh, just, People are excited to have football back here, uh, and the excitement's justified. So now we got to go make it right for them. Uh, if you are uh, under the age of 40, you have no idea what is about to happen in this town. Those of you 40 and over, you remember the good old days? Well, apparently they are back. You cannot buy a ticket to see the Cleveland Browns. They are all sold out, and I am so excited. Another important topic for the Browns: quarterback Baker Mayfield's mustache, folks. Uh, not really, but let's have some fun. All right, I'm not mustache guy. Big Show uh, shaved the beard, but he is sporting a stash. He looks like a cop from a 70s TV show. Um, so do we like Baker's mustache? I don't think so. Kate, my producer, likes it. Some people do. wonder if Baker's wife likes it. So what's the story on the mustache? Baker had to spill the beans. Maybe you'll find out. Maybe you won't. I don't know. <laughs> That's the elegance of having a mustache. You just don't know what's going to happen. No kind of bed or quarterback bonding or anything like that? It's like the QB RV. You guys just don't know. <laughs> in any films in the future, right? You would like that, wouldn't you, Tony? <laughs> <laughs> you know one thing I love about Baker Mayfield? He's got a sense of humor and he has fun. Uh, and I think that's important. Yeah, he's got to be the leader of the team, and I think he'll do the job on the field. But boy, does he keep his team loose. From offense to defense and a guy who is having a lot of fun. Folks, you know what I'm taking away from training camp right now? Miles Garrett's going to have a really big year. He's worked out with Stipe Miocic. He's done some MMA stuff. He's down about 10 pounds, but he put on some muscle. Garrett is as quick as he has ever been. Now in his third season, I expect him to be a pro bowler. I expect him... He had 13 and a half sacks last year. I think he will approach 20 sacks this year, and I think he might be an MVP candidate on the defensive side of the ball. Get ready for 95 to be huge. The Browns coaching staff realizes they have a stud in number 95. He's very, been very consistent, um, but you know what? Miles has a high uh, expectation of himself. We have just as high of expectation of him as he does himself. And uh, we're going to hold him to that, and he's going to hold himself to that. What do you, think he's you know, he's extremely quick off the ball. All right, We know what he can do from a standpoint of rushing the passer. All right, I'm really impressed right now with how he's you know, playing the run, and that's one of the main things that we emphasize and talk about all the time. we got to do a great job of stopping the run first. Um, by the way, the Browns' defense has gone under the radar so far. Folks, I think they're going to be much better than last year. I thought they did a great job last year with – what they had to work with, but they've added a lot of pieces, parts. Don't sleep on the Browns' defense. I think it's going to be a big key for them this year. Speaking of the Browns now, they found their quarterback. They've got a good defense. Find me my kicker. What's going on? I wanted Phil Dawson to come back and kick, but 
He is not going to be available. Phil retired a Brown on Friday as the 44 year old says he's hanging it up. I want Phil to know this. Not only will Phil be known as one of the best kickers in Brown's history. Oh, remember the snow globe game. Phil will be known as one of the favorite Browns players in history. He loves Cleveland. He always wanted a kick in the Super Bowl for the Browns. I remember doing games for Fox. I worked the sidelines for the Fox Network for about three or four years. Well, when you're on the sidelines, all you got to do during a game is hang around and talk to the kickers. I got to be pretty close with Phil. I'll tell you, he's a really great guy and he loves the Cleveland area. So what does he think about all the excitement happening around his former team? I'm jealous. Uh, there were a lot of years where it wasn't like this here. Uh, but I'm excited for the city. I'm excited for the Browns organization. I, I'm, I'm, I'm just as excited. I mean, I'm going to cheer for the Browns uh, like crazy. But I think, I think the fans are due. I think it's great for them to have the opportunity to be excited, a genuine excitement, not just a draft day excitement, but actually getting a football season and having high expectations and hopes. Oh, I agree with all that. By the way, Phil, we love you. I mean, other than Joe Thomas, he might be the most popular Brown since 1999. Wrapping up a little football, what a weekend it was in Canton, as it always is. As the Pro Football Hall of Fame festivities came to a close, I want to just shout out all my peeps in Stark and Summit County down there in Canton. They put on a hell of a show as they get all the royalty from all over the National Football League. Everybody was in town. It was an absolutely beautiful weekend. Don't forget, kids, we're getting the NFL draft in a couple of years. That is going to be huge as well. From football to baseball, Tribe fans, how are you feeling? Are you feeling dangerous? I am. Baker Mayfield at the Indians game. And, folks, this went viral. As soon as, look at Baker. Grabs a beer, bites into the can, chugs it, down, Lindor, right? Let's go. Get up. Let's go. Think he's having fun, kids? Look at Baker. Rocking the Lindor. Oh, by the way, the Indians came up after that and came up big with five runs in the fourth. Look at Chase. They kept this with the home run Saturday night. And then that's Baker's guy, Frankie Lindor. Yeah, what's Colin Coward going to say tomorrow about Baker's beer chugging? Skill? I don't know. Is it me or did it look like Baker's chugged a few of those beers in the past? I could remember chugging a few beers in the past. The Indians wrap up their homestand with a three game series against the Rangers starting tomorrow night. No word on when Baker will be back chugging beers, but I hope it's soon. Coming up, we're going to spin the wheel, kids. I don't know the topics, and I don't want to know the topics. Should be pretty interesting. Plus, we're going to eat. We've got a Riz on the road. Don't go anywhere. The Rizzo Show from Grandma's Return. Stay with us. Welcome back. I, is this Grandma's liquor cabinet right here? Is this what we're doing? Is this... Is this girl? No liquor. Her grandpa's been busy over here. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, they're gonna get me for making fun of it. Folks, we have a beautiful new studio coming. You're not gonna, you're not gonna believe it. It's really nice. Welcome back to the Rizzo Show. All right, time now for one of my favorite segments. Here's what we do. We spin the wheel of sports topics. I have no idea what they are, so we're all gonna look at them together. What are we gonna start with? Oh! My man, number 14, Otto Graham. Kids, I know you don't know who Otto Graham is, and if you look at his statistics, you probably think he doesn't belong in the Hall of Fame. You're wrong. He was the biggest winner. I think he won 10 straight divisions for the Browns. Uh, let's see, four, three, seven uh, titles, four in the AAFC, three in the National Football League. The Browns are going to unveil a statue for Otto Graham during the season. Maybe they should have done this years ago. I have to say this, though. I, I love Otto Graham, and I certainly think he deserved it. He passed away at the age of 82. Where's the Paul Brown statue? I mean, Paul Brown invented everything. We're, we're the Browns because of Paul Brown. I think it's because he went to Cincinnati and started the Bengals, which wasn't his decision. If you remember, Art Modell forced him out. But I think Paul Brown deserves some kind of recognition at Cleveland Brown Stadium as well, although I am happy for Otto Graham. He was a winner. Baker, winner. Nay! Oh, fantasy football. You know what my problem is in fantasy football? I used to take all the Browns. I, and I would never take 
Roethlisberger because he was a Steeler or, or somebody for the Ravens, and they were always good, so I've never won my fantasy football league. My own fantasy football league on my radio show, I've never won. By the way, that's going to change because this year, if I get the number one pick, I'm taking Baker. I don't care if he's worthy of it or not. I just want Baker on my team. I want to root for Baker every Sunday. If you play fantasy football to win, that's great. I got to pick the Browns players so I can have fun every Sunday. Can you imagine rooting for Ben Roethlisberger? That, that's, enjoy your uh, pieces of silver, you traitors. Next. David Griffin. Oh, Dave. I don't know. Oh, he's friend of show. You know how many times David Griffin d drove down here in the winter, folks, to be on the Rizzo show? Look at how great our old set looks. Anyway, I love David Griffin, but I don't know what he was thinking when he did this article saying he was miserable. He since has backtracked. He said he didn't have any fun after the Cavs won the uh, championship in 2016. Dave, I love you. I had fun. He says his experience with LeBron was, quote, miserable, questioned LeBron's desire to win. Like I said, since then, he has backtracked. Boy, you would think Dave's got enough to do. But, David, we love you, and you're always still welcome here on, on, on the Rizzo Show. But, man, don't talk smack about my man LeBron. He brought us our championship. Next! What do we got? Oh, NBA. Draymond, wow. Everybody's getting paid but us, kids. What a payday for the Golden State Warrior. He signed a four, folks, you, you, teach your kids to play basketball. He signed a four year, $100 million contract extension. Also, the NBA Christmas games came out. Oh, big surprise. The Lakers are gonna play the Clippers. They're gonna play the, you know, well, I think the Cavs are gonna be fun and interesting to watch. Probably not a playoff year for us, so. I guess it's great that the Warriors aren't the favorite and they probably won't win. And there's a bunch of teams that could win. But boy, it's hard to see this musical chairs thing that happens every summer and then everybody plops down by October. Uh, by the way, I think this year NBA champs, the Milwaukee Bucks. What a great story that would be. One more, one more, one more. Trick or treat. Have you heard about a petition to move Halloween to the last Saturday in October? As it stands right now, it falls on a Thursday. More than 100,000 people have signed up. Why? Why do they want it on? Why do they want it? The, the Snickers say they will give away 1 million Snickers bar if the date is changed. Why do they want it on a Saturday? Because the, the, the kid, the kid, the Halloween ends at 7 o'clock at night. I, believe me, I know. What are you, the kids, when we were kids, I mean, we were up till 10 o'clock with, and, and we didn't have the fancy stuff the kids had now. We just pretty much used pillowcases and all that, but. I don't know, if you want to change Halloween, more power to you. I'll take candy whenever I can get it, by the way. Coming up, we're going to an unbelievable sports bar, and you'll never guess where it is. Stay tuned. There's a new show in town, Northeast Ohio, and we brought the spirit of Las Vegas with us. Win big in August during our ultimate summer gift giveaway. Visit us on Mondays, Thursdays, and Saturdays beginning August 1st from 11 to 7. Collect each gift set to be eligible for bonus drawings, including Cleveland football jerseys, Kate Spade bags, and KitchenAid artisan mixers. Visit TAP at MGM Northfield Park to experience our new weekend brunch every Saturday and Sunday from 10 until 2. Enjoy brunch favorites like chicken and waffles, orange French toast, and the muddy skillet. Don't miss your favorite entertainers performing live at MGM Northfield Park. The hilarious Wayne Brady brings his special improv comedy to town, plus an intimate night with Soul Asylum up close and acoustic on Saturday, August 17th. Tickets available at the box office or Ticketmaster.com. Take a Vegas vacation without leaving the state. MGM Northfield Park. Las Vegas is here. Is here. And Las Vegas is here. You know what? Las Vegas is here. Welcome back to the Rizzo Show. I got to say this, man. We were at uh, MGM Northfield Park last week, or this past week. And um, if you haven't been there since it switched over to Marvel, you got to get out there. I didn't think... They can make it any better, but they really did. Now, I was there this week, and we were at the Tap Sports Bar. You remember Chef Chris? He's been on Rizzo's show before. Remember, Bernie's Restaurant is still there. Place looks absolutely beautiful. And wait until you see the upgrade of food at Tap.
Chris, explain what the concept is with TAP. It's an MGM thing. I was just at the TAP in Las Vegas. Right, right, been there, fantastic. Um, it is an MGM original concept. Um, they have locations obviously in Las Vegas, uh, one in Detroit, one in National Harbor, and now one here in Northeast Ohio. And you have kept a lot of the favorites, but you tweaked everything on this menu. Explain right. that. We've tweaked everything on the menu, uh, changed the presentation, changed a few of the ingredients. Um, it's all a, a lot of our original um, design. Um, we've got a bunch of different items. I mean, all sorts of uh, different things for people. Great, to great comfort food, some really good things. And we have a fantastic right. salads. It's right, all, right, not right. just all meat. You see the salmon. So let's start, Chris. First of all, what is this? My producer, Katie, said that's as big as my head. Yes, that was a little slam on me. This here, oh, this is our uh, giant Bavarian pretzel. Really popular, nice little presentation. Right? Appetite. Really I love how you do that. You're yeah, hanging that pretzel. Absolutely, right. Uh, we have beer cheese, a nice spicy mustard that we make. Um, really great seller. Good now, thing to start with. You mentioned beer cheese. What is in these nachos? They are spectacular. So these are traditional nacho, but instead of using just regular nacho cheddar cheese, we do a beer cheese. Oh, on it, it so tastes great. It, yeah, it's got a definitely a, a different flavor than you would be expecting. What else down here? We got a Reuben. Thinly sliced corned beef. We mm. use a Russian dressing, right. which is traditional instead of a thousand island. Right. Representing the Slavic village right yeah, there. Yeah, we got the, the Polish, Polish boy. boy. All beef sausage, sauerkraut, simmered onions. Very, very nice. What uh, is that? That is brisket. our brisket chili, chili? Our smoked brisket chili. Oh, that really explain nice. Explain how you make that. This is so delicious. Yeah, so we, we take uh, brisket, render it down, smoke it for hours, right? Use a lot of the drippings. Our meats, that beans. That cheese on there is phenomenal. Yeah. It's great when stuff. When the brisket melts stuff. in your mouth. You've also got, what do you got, ribs? Oh my God. Ribs, right, beautiful. Back ribs there, very nice, tender, nice full rack. With a good sauce, mm -hmm. homemade. Right. And I gotta have a steak, and boy, uh, that's yeah, a steak. Yeah, we have a couple steaks. This, yeah. is, a, this is a nice cowboy uh, ribeye that we have here. Oh, uh, beautiful. Yeah, you're cutting that with a butter knife. How about that? Very that nice. Goes. We have a nice, beautiful grilled chicken cob. Mm. But this here, this is one of my favorite things on the menu. It's just a. A beautiful wedge salad, right? Nice hearty fork and knife salad. Oh, yeah. And this is just a small sampling of what we have to eat here. I mean, there's all kinds of things. Great burgers, more sandwiches, appetizers, desserts. And, and don't I, forget the draft beer. And I believe this is the place to watch all the games, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, we look think at so. many screens. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I'm excited about Brown season coming up. Can't wait to see some of the big games. But it, it's pretty much uh, any sporting event that's on, this is a place to watch it. Boy, and the food is just really good. Thank Chef, you. phenomenal job. Thank Absolutely you. love it. We're here at TAP MGM Northfield Park. You best believe a lot of this is going home with me. Um, folks, I gotta tell you, that is a beautiful sports bar. What a great place to watch a game. And uh, little birdies are telling me, I think we're gonna be able to bet on sports here in the state of Ohio sooner rather than later. There's a couple of bills on the floor right now down in Columbus. And I would believe that the TAP Sports Bar, if you were able to put a little sports book next to that TAP Sports Bar, man, you're going to be able to get in there for all the NCAA tournament, NFL Sundays, the Super Bowl. Folks, I think it's coming. Cross your fingers. They've got sports gambling all over the country. I don't know what the state of Ohio is waiting for. Let's take advantage of it. Of course, you've got to gamble responsibly. It's dangerous for some people, but for a lot of people, it's a lot of fun, and I hope they get it at TAP. Don't go anywhere. We will wrap things up from Grandma's house when we come back. Hello. Oh, there we go. I never know when they're going to turn my mic on. Folks, don't forget to stay tuned. Our good friends, Big Chuck and Little John. One of, my, one, of, one of the disappointments of my career is I don't think I was ever in a Big Chuck and Little John skit for as long as I've worked here since the 90s. Can you believe that? Big Chuck and Little John skit. All right, don't go anywhere. Folks, you know what we have this week coming up? The Browns. They have a game. It doesn't count, but I don't think it's going to matter. Sold out preseason games. That's right. That's what you're going to get. Browns are home against the Redskins, and the regular season is right around. The Where's the countdown clock, Katie? Oh, there it is. Oh, my God. Do we still have 35 days? Can I say this? It's been the longest offseason of my Browns life, waiting for this team to finally play a game. And, oh, by the way, 37,000 for a scrimmage? Yes. I think there'll be 60,000 people plus to see the Browns on Thursday night. Now, don't get excited, kids, because I think Baker is going to play about three or four plays. 
I don't even know if Odell is going to play. Would you play Odell? I might just let him sit this first game out. Remember a couple of years ago, he actually got hurt at, at First Energy Stadium when he was playing for the Giants. Keep everyone healthy. That's our goal. Go Tribe. Go Browns. Go Cavs. Thank you for being here. Grandma. Oh, sorry. Good to be alive. Good night, everybody.